Here's another great example of how surface tension affects everyday things in life. Uh, one that we're all probably very familiar with is the soap bubble. Of course, as kids, we like to, maybe as adults as well, we love to make soap bubbles. And so what is the pressure inside a soap bubble? So we have pressure inside a soap bubble due to the surface tension of the surface of the bubble. Now, a soap bubble is different from a water drop in that it actually is a spherical shell that has an inner inner and outer surface. So the surface tension works along the inner surface and works along the outer surface. Now, of course, the coefficient of uh, surface tension is less for soap bubbles because when you introduce soap with water, it lowers the surface tension. Now, what would be the increase in pressure inside this soap bubble? Again, the way we want to set that up is we say that the force to the surface tension is equal to the coefficient of the soap bubble, water, or water with soap in it, times the total length of the surface. Now, in this case, it will be twice the circumference of the soap bubble at the, you know, when we cut it in half. And then also we can say that the pressure is equal to force divided by the area, which implies that the force is equal to pressure times area. So now what we can do is we can set the force of the surface tension equal to the force caused by the pressure. So when we set those two equal to each other, we have gamma times L is equal to pressure times area. And since we want to know the, what the pressure is, we solve this for pressure. So pressure is equal to gamma L divided by the area. Now, gamma times L, remember L is twice the circumference of the cross-sectional area of the, um, of the sub bubble. So that would be two times 2 pi times the radius divided by the cross-sectional area. And again, it's the effective area. Notice that if we think of the uh, bubble as being a semisphere when we cut it in half and we have the pressure pushing down. Oop, that's not the right way of doing it. Where's my, uh, <coughs> my racer here? Uh, it's not doing this correctly. So what we want to show is that the pressure acts perpendicular to the surface everywhere inside the bubble, but in this case only the vertical components, let me use a different color, only the vertical components of these pressure um, vectors, if you want to look at that, there we go, there we go, only the vertical components matter in this case because they are perpendicular, they're in the same direction as the uh, forces caused by the surface tension. And so therefore, we have what we call an effective area over which this pressure acts, which would be the cross-sectional area of the soap bubble, not the dome-shaped uh, area of the soap bubble. So that means that for an area, we use pi r squared, because that's the effective area over which the pressure acts. Okay, now when we simplify this a little bit, we have a pi and a pi, we have an r, and this r cancels out. So finally, the pressure inside a soap bubble is equal to four times the coefficient of surface tension divided by the radius, which in this case is four times 25 dynes per centimeters divided by the radius. In this case, we took a radius of one centimeter, so one centimeter, and uh, that would therefore be the pressure is equal to 100 dyne per centimeter squared. If we then convert that to newtons per meter squared, we simply have to divide that number by 10, and we get 10 newtons per meter squared, which is, of course, a very, very small fraction of the uh, atmospheric pressure. However, it's measurable. It's there. Um, now, if, of course, the soap bubbles get smaller, the pressure will increase, and um, uh, because then we have the ratio of the area to volume changes, uh, it'll be a much greater surface area to volume ratio, and if there's more surface area, that means there's more surface tension, and therefore the pressure builds up. So if the radius was, for example, 0.1 centimeter, or one millimeter radius soap bubble, then the pressure would be 10 times as high, would then be 100 newtons per square meter. But that's how you figure out the pressure inside a soap bubble.